Hey folks, Tivik here and welcome to this mod spotlight of Applied Energistics. This is a bit of a special spotlight, it's not just going through what the mod uh, has in form of blocks and this stuff, but it's gonna be sort of a tutorial series, because I know a lot of you guys want that. Um, this world is in 1.5.2. At the moment, I haven't upgraded yet to 1.6, but the changes are not that big, and uh, the mod uh, the mod is compatible with both at the time I'm recording this. So let's get started with applied energistics. The first thing you will want to look for is the Circus Quartz Ore. This is kind of vital to get started with this mod. So this can be found above diamonds but below sea level. So this is actually placed, so you won't find these amounts. Um, it's kind of rare, so you'll be digging around a lot to find this if you are running with standard amounts of ore in the world. When breaking these, you will get Certus Quartz ore, Certus Quartz dust, I mean, and uh, you will also get crystals. So let me show you. I got one crystal, one Certus Quartz. Let's break, and there I actually got dust and a crystal. So, this is 15 blocks. No, it's actually 18 blocks. So let's break, break all these and see how much we get. This pickaxe does not have any form of luck uh, modifier on it. It's a Tinker's Construct one. But if you have one with luck, you will find that um, you can get a lot more. So we got a little bit of both. Right, that's all for the ore and the world gen. The next block I want to take a look at is the grindstone. Oh, let me show you the recipe of this. It requires a wood gear and dust, either the nether quartz dust and the or the, uh, the new surface quartz one. Cobblestone and normal stones. Just for convenience I'm going to give us this. Oh, wrong button. There we go. For convenience. This one has three input slots and three output slots. Let me show you by adding a few Certus Quartz ore. We will also uh, require one more thing. We'll need a crank. A wooden crank is made using sticks. Any kind of sticks. So if you have biomes so plenty, you can use the reeds. I think you can use the bamboo sticks as well, or any of the natural ones. So, let's uh, make one crank. You just right-click with it, and it's connected. Perfect. And then you need to start turning this one. Three, four, five, six, seven, and it broke. It doesn't require a lot to break, but you get some ore out of it. Um, let's put one more of these in and let's get one more crank. As you can see, each time I turn, I have a chance to get some out of it. So, this does not only work with the Certus Quartz ore, you will probably not get that so much, but let's get, say, Iron Ore. And I'm going to turn the crank now eight times, because I think that's the number. One, two, I think that was three, wasn't it? Seven, and eight. Click, and we have Pulverized Iron. It uses the Ore Dictionary to get the first one, which is from Thermal Expansion. So, this is a cheap way to get double ores in the beginning. But as you saw, the crafting recipe required... It required... Oh. It required a wood gear and some dust. And cooked up stone. That's usually not a problem, is it? No, it isn't. Right, so that's it about these simple starter blocks. You will want to get these quite early before you get power generation and stuff like that. So... Let's dive into the actual mod, shall we? There are so many things you can do with this, but first let's set up the absolute basics. 
I also wanted to show you that there are a few tools that you can get from this mod. The tools are basically quartz versions of the basic ones, like the axe, the hoe, the shovel, pickaxe and sword. And let me show you the recipes here. The axe is pretty much the same thing. So all these can be used as uh, normal tools. I'm pretty sure that they use up about... Um, they're about iron style um, for their uh, durability, which means that they last about as long as an iron one does. And uh, it could be a cheap way if you're running low on iron. And the hole is just two sticks and service quartz. And this is the shovel. And this is the pickaxe. And this is the sword. And it adds its own wrench. This can be used to turn uh, their machinery around. I am using the prototype Omni Wrench from Omni Tools. But this could be cheaper for you if you just want something for applied energistics. I am not sure if it works on other mods. I haven't actually tested that out. But um, feel free to use it. It could be a good thing to try out. Right, so let's get into the actual ME stuff. This is where things get interesting. So this is where it gets really interesting. You have these eight basic components that you will require to build most items. Um, the first one is the quartz cutting knife. It's crafted like so. You have two sticks, an iron ingot, and two certus quartz. Right? Very simple to craft, and it's needed for these two items, which are the assemblies for the processors. We'll get to these soon. Uh, but first, this here is silicon. And it is crafted by smelting quartz dust in a powered furnace. Well, in a furnace. Any furnace will do. I just happen to have powered furnace because I like them. There we go. We have silicon. Right, so these assemblies... They are made for the basic processor assembly. It's a redstone around gold with a silicon and a quartz cutting knife. Let's uh, get one of those assemblies. Oh, I have one. Well, this is then put into a powered furnace and it will boil down to a completed processor, right? And then, this is the advanced processor. It's used in a little bit more complicated items. Uh, but uh, in one of the items that we'll start out fairly soon with. But yeah, it should be noted that the quartz cutting knife is not used up in the process, but it takes damage, so you will have to replace it. Let's cook this one up. There you go. Perfect. The next item on the list here is Flux Dust. This is crafted up using Redstone, Certus Quartz Dust and Nether Quartz Dust. The last one here, it comes from Polarizing Nether Quartz. Either you use the grinder block that we started out with, the grindstone, or you can just put it in a pulverizer and it will pulverize up to Nether Quartz Dust. The Fluix dust is used as, um, let's just say it's used in most conductive items. For instance, the cables, which we'll get to later. Um, so it's kind of important to have, and it's one of the basic items that you will make a lot of. I can promise you that. And then finally, we have two kind of expensive recipes here. We have the Fluix Crystal, which is Nether Quartz with Redstone and Certus Quartz. This is used in a few machines. Um, for instance, let's see. It's used for the Fluix Pearl in the Energy Cell and the Emmy Controller. These are machines that we'll get to later. And 
This one here is the conversion matrix. This is used in machines that need to transport items in and out of the system and convert them from matter to ME, which we'll get to. And it's crafted up using four iron as a box with certus quartz, nether quartz, two fluix dust, and a basic processor. As you can see, the recipes get quite, um, let's just say, complicated. But don't let that scare you away from this mod, because this is a really cool item. You'll see why in a moment. So let's get started on building our first energy-based storage. So, I'm saying this ME all the time. That stands for Matter Energy and is the main idea of Applied Energistics. Um, you will like it in the long run because it will totally change the way you store items. You remember having 10 or 15 chests to store just all the cobblestone? It's gone. You're not gonna need that, that anymore. Remember having factorization barrels? Well, they're limited. They store just one item. They store a lot of it, sure, but they're limited. But this... The limit is how much energy you can produce and feed the system. Um, so, let's uh, get started. The absolutely first item uh, that you can craft is the ME chest. Remember the conversion matrix from the previous uh, segment there? Yeah. We need to use one of those with glass and an iron frame for a chest. And you get an ME chest, which I will place down here and power it up. Because this thing can take power directly from the uh, power network. Wow. This is a lot of stuff. But it doesn't really do anything yet. No, it doesn't. But let me just show you what these little items are. Well, these buttons are. First of all, you have the sort, which can go by number of items, priority and cell order, Item ID, item name, right? I usually leave it on number of items. You can sort up and down, so you get the ones with the most in them first, or the least in them first. Um, also, there are two tabs on the side here. One being the main tab for the actual chest, and one the storage priority. We'll get to storage priority later in some more advanced um, tutorials. But I can't really do anything. I can't put anything in here. Hmm. So that's a bit sad. We'll need to get a cell. We'll need to get an energy storage cell, or rather a, a normal storage cell is crafted up like this using redstone and quartz dust and a basic processor. One standard storage cell uses up roughly four quartz, well, exactly four quartz, one gold for the processor, and six redstone, and one silicon. All right. It's not too expensive, but it adds up. I can guarantee you that. Once you have one of these crafted up, you can make a storage cell out of it, or a storage uh, unit. What are they? Well, they basically let you store, since this is the basic one, 1k bytes. Bytes, you say? Is this computer stuff now? Yes, it is. They store, in Applied Energistics, everything is stored using bytes. And uh, one item, uh, let's see, you can get in a storage cell of 1k, you can get, uh, I think it's 63, yeah, it's 63, it says that straight in front of me, you can have 63 different types, okay, and um, of course, the bytes used is dependent on how much you put in it, and each item takes up bytes. I don't have the math in my head right now, but uh, I think it's... I'm not sure. Let me just take a quick look here. Uh, no. 
I think it's 127. If you have 63 items in the cell, you can get 65 stacks of items. If you have one one item, you can get 127. Okay, we'll take a look at this later. But for now, let's plop this into this storage unit here. And it lights up. Let's uh, get some different items. Some stone, we can get some... Uh, well, not stone slabs, I don't like those. Cobblestone, and we can get some fancy stuff like block of redstone, okay? Now I put that in, and it's stored. It's stored as 16 bytes. So 16 bytes is one single stack. Let's put in one more, and you see it goes to 128, and it's now 24, so it goes down a little bit there. Let's put in some more. 32. And it's now to 40. So you can store and then you can pick up items. Quite easy, isn't it? Right. So if you have items in and you want to take, say, a stack out, you just left click and you have a stack in your hand. You can also right click to get half a stack or shift right click to get one item. This one is kind of useful because it takes energy when you start putting items in and out of the system. Let's put in the blocks of redstone. Now you'll see that there's two of 63 types. Right, and we put in the cobblestone slabs. I did give slabs, did I? Let's uh, get those and put in the cobblestone instead. And now we're up to three of 63 types. So you can fill this here with different types of items and it will eventually fill up not only with the bytes used but also in the types used so you need to make sure that you balance this out right so this is a very basic thing to do the me chest shows green when it's at um, uh, it shows green when let's see Green when there is room for items, but it shows orange if there is no room for types, but room for items. If there is no power, it will turn off, eventually. Let's put some stuff in. It still has some power now charged up in the system, but it will run out. So let's keep adding stuff like this. Oh, I can't drain it of energy. Come on. Now we're actually using up 200... Yeah, 254 bytes. No power, so it should be eventually powering off. There we go. It's now powered off. I can't see the items if I pick up the storage. But if I power it on, the items are still there. Perfect. Now, the good thing with this is you can pick up this storage cell and walk around with it and put it back and the items are still there. Cool, huh? Yeah, I thought you'd think that. Right, so that's one way to store items. Let's get this storage and break this one here. And let's go to the next block, the ME controller. This is kind of an expensive recipe, but it's basically the main item you will need if you want to make anything more complicated than just hooking up a chest and believe me you will want to right so you will need four iron ingots four flux crystals and an advanced processor remember this is crafted using the processor assembly in a furnace which is made like this and the flux crystals was nether quartz redstone around certus quartz right so, putting this down next to a power cable, I'm going to do this, plop, will power it up. That went very quickly up, but if you have slow power generation, you will see this bar go up. I don't have numbers for how much it stores, but I do have numbers for, the, um, uh, for how much 
this machine um, requires per item in it. Um, but I don't have it available in front of me. But um, the controller uses six units. As you can see, six units, right? It can be supplied by power using EU from Industrial Craft. It can use Buildcraft uh, Mega Joules or Joules from Universal Electricity. EU is two units. Mega Joule is five units and 20 Universal Electricity Joules is one unit, right? Easy enough, perfect. Now, this doesn't do much on its own. It has a slot here on the side, which is for uh, some more advanced stuff. We'll get to that later. But you can put the ME chest next to it and put the storage in there, and it will power the ME chest. And now it's using seven units per tick. So it's draining a little bit. We're not up to two e uh, megajoules per tick yet, but soon. Right. And you can, of course, just pick that up. Still using seven. And now it's using six. Let's uh, take a look at the next item, which is usually what I get quite early in the storage, storage part. It's the ME drive. This drive takes two basic processors and iron and glass. You can place that up next to a controller and it will use up two units just by sitting there. This is basically a storage rack. You have 10 slots for cells. So I can put one in there and yeah, it shows. It actually shows depending on where I'm putting the item. Cool, huh? So this lets me see the basic information about it. I can see the green light, meaning there is place, uh, space enough on the storage for both items and types, right? Perfect. And um, everything is stored here, but I can't get the items out. No, that's true. For that, you're going to need something a bit more special. Uh, you are going to need, and why is the time moving? I thought I locked you to noon. You're going to need an item called the... ME monitor or the access terminal. The access terminal. Let's uh, take a look at that one, shall we? The access terminal is crafted up using iron ingots, glass, and a new item, the ME cable, which we have not yet taken a look at. Let's uh, hop into this one. And, oh, not the blue one, the absolutely basic one, please. Where are you? There you are. This is the basic cable. It requires glass and this Fluix dust. If you remember, it was nether, nether quartz dust, surface quartz dust, and redstone for two. So, that's used to make ME cabling. ME cabling... You can run that out from any ME system. This is a multi-block, so anything here will connect up to this system. Do note that when you place a cable or break a cable, the system reboots. We'll get to reasons why you'll want to make sure you don't do that while other things are happening later. But the access terminal was conversion matrix and cable. Right. Fairly simple. You can just place that down, and if it's bright, it's connected and working. If I place it somewhere where it cannot connect, it will be dark and it cannot con uh, communicate. So let's hook it up with the cable there, and you have the ME terminal. This is basically a scrollable and very flexible terminal to access all your items. Now, these items are in this storage and I am taking them out. Now it's using a little bit more. This one uses um, a one unit per tick only. I think that the cables 
use one sixteenth. So sixteen in a row uses up one. So you can make pretty large networks without the system choking up on that and using too much energy. Right, so the ME terminal is searchable. Stone? Well, everything is called stone. Redstone? Sure. Cobble? Sure. Or stone? Well, can't search on that because it will get everything. So if I add a lot of items, I will easily be able to find it. This also sorts by priority, item ID, name, number of items, of course, and you can go by biggest first, smallest first. Anything can be stored in here, even non-stackable items. So if I give myself a couple of these, they will stack up, and they only use one type. So you can use this to your advantage. And let's uh, just get all these and throw them away. Because we don't need them now. Right. We have a basic ME system. So you can continue crafting these items and filling this up with storage units. And I'll just add them like this and one more. There. And we now have... 10 times the storage, or almost. This does not show, but it's now using a lot more units. Uh, for each uh, for each cell, it uses up a half unit per tick. So if I take out 2, it will go down to 13. Another 2 out, it's 12, and so on. This is for the 1k storage cell. We will get to the bigger ones, well... Let's uh, take a look at the bigger ones right away. So storage. This is a kind of a big topic, but I'll sum it up real quick before I end this first part of this mod spotlight. There are a lot of different types of storage. You have four types of cells or storage housings. It's the 1K, the 4K, the 16K and the 64k. I think it's the 16 or is this the 32? No, it's the 16. The 64k stores 64,000 bytes. And the 4k is 4k bytes. But these are kind of expensive. Let me show you. You remember the storage cell. This is the basic one. For the next one, which is the storage segment, you need three storage cells okay this is to make the 4k storage for the 16k storage you need three storage segments and advanced processes this time with glowstone to get the storage block and to make the storage cluster you need three storage blocks let's just sum that up not going into the amount of redstone and glowstone you need, you're going to need 108 quartz, 36 gold bars, and 4 diamonds to make this storage cluster. So it is kind of expensive. This is roughly an estimate of the costs from the website, but it's a lot. But then, on the other hand, a 64k storage cell can store... 8,128 stacks of a single item or 4,160 stacks of items if it is 63 different types. Wow, that's kind of a lot. Yeah, it is. You will probably want to craft the bigger ones. In my uh, recent Let's Play series, I have, I think, I crafted a bunch of these. Or did I go for the 16k? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I made the storage cluster ones. And they are expensive. They use hundreds and hundreds of redstone. So be sure that you have the materials before you start. Right. These work just like the other ones. If you put them in... I'm going to give myself... Oh, that's the wrong one. You put them in just like the other ones. And they store in there. 
Now, these use a little bit of different amount of energy. The 1K use a half unit, the 4K uses one unit, the 16K uses 1.5 units, and the 64 uses two units per tick. And this is just for the actual storage cell. And uh, we'll get more into the basic math of this, but I can guarantee you that you will need a lot of power for this system. Right, that's going to be the end of this first episode of this spotlight slash tutorial. In the next one, we're going to take a look at some more advanced stuff. So I will see you then, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.